average person doesn't even know that there are all these, these pitfalls in the medical center. Many people are aware of the 100,000 people die every year in hospitals due to medical error. That, that was a study that came out, um, a very important study that came out in 1999, published in a book in 2000 by the Institute of Medicine. The number is repeated over and over again, but people don't know what to do. It's kind of like if that's, if that's just given to you, what are you going to do about it? I was driven to write a book that gives you advice on how to avoid a lot of the error. It's kind of like an in, from an insider, I can help you see what goes on. And then as a doctor who is not playing a doctor but an advocate, I can tell you how the doctors and nurses will perceive what you're saying and tell you the exact things to say. One of the goals of Cautious Patient is to make people aware that there are things that can happen to them in the hospital and as an outpatient that, that they can participate in their health care and then those things won't happen to them. A woman who had read my book happened to be an occupational therapist in Maryland and she read my book and wrote me an email that said, um, Dr. Oliver, my mother's going in the hospital in New York to have, um, I think, hip surgery. Uh, and my sisters and my mom, they, they, tour, they toured the hospital and they found out that they don't allow overnight, any overnight people in, in a room with a semi-private room because that would be against HIPAA regulations or whatever. Um, and how do I get around this? Because you're saying that, you're saying that, that you, someone needs to be there with the patient. And so I led her through some steps that I outline in the book um, we, just, we just went into more detail about saying the exact right things um, to the hospital administrator, starting at the top and saying, my mother will not be comfortable without me there. She will be scared. She will be calling the nurses too much. Um, if it's not against HIPAA regulations during the day, it's not against HIPAA regulations during the night, which is patient, patient privacy regulations. And when you are there, you are able to help your mother to the bathroom. She doesn't have to wait for the nurse to get around to it once she's got the call button. You are there in case your mother needs the pain medicine and the nurse isn't responding. You can walk to the desk and say, we called 20 minutes ago, when's it coming? Your mother as a patient can't do that. The occupational therapist who then advocated for her mother wrote me an email at the end of her mother's uh, hospitalization and said the administration had seen it their way and they had stayed with their mother and followed the other things that we talk about in the book and that her mother's uh, hospitalization went smoothly. And that just makes me really happy um, because during the night at the hospital, most people don't know that the nurse to patient ratio often goes down. Most people don't know that the hospital can set any nurse to patient ratio that they want. They can give you a one to five nurse ratio during the day and then a one to seven or a one to eight. You don't know at night. And I have to say that during my husband's hospitalization, when because I was a physician, they let me, they let me stay in the ICU with him, um, sleeping in a chair, that I brought, I brought a camp chair. If they don't have accommodations for you, buy, buy a camp chair and, and a, l a little neck pillow and you can sleep um, when you're not needed. But I can't tell you in that ICU how many codes went on at night. The nurses are under more stress. There's not as many people coming through to observe what's going on. There are older people crying out, help me, help me. You need to be there. You need to be there at night. And more and more hospitals are opening up the ICUs and opening up these areas. The, the, the past five years, the hospitals, because of the Joint Commission and the IHI, have gone through tremendous growth in opening up these areas and, and encouraging the patient to be more participatory, encouraging patient advocacy, encouraging an advocate at your bedside 24-7. Um, so those are also the sort of things I told my uh, the woman who asked 
how do I get the hospital administrator to agree to this is like National Patient Safety Foundation says you should have somebody with you 24-7. The Joint Commission says you should participate and be there 24-7 for, for your um, loved one. If you think of the golden age where you're watching movies and patients and have nurses sitting there holding their hands at night or whatever, that's not happening anymore. Your loved one, you might as you might as well just park them in the hallway somewhere because if if you if they're not making any noise, the nurses really don't visit them. I mean, they may visit them to take vital signs when the doctor has ordered, but all night long, you don't know what what your mom might be needing and and not getting. So I mean, you just have to be you have to be there. Mm -hmm.